Hello everyone! What is going on? In today's video, I will be comparing the real world differences between my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro and my 2018 13 inch MacBook Pro. Although not extremely important for this video, here are the specific options and specs for both of these devices. The first difference is the overall size. The 16 inch MacBook Pro is just massive. If you plan on using this on a small or cramped desk, the bigger body size will definitely be noticeable. However, I have not noticed a difference in terms of carrying this larger device in my backpack around campus, even though it is about 1.3 pounds heavier than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. With this larger size, you get a bigger screen, bigger battery, bigger trackpad, and bigger speakers. Both displays are essentially the same apart from size. Their pixel densities and resolutions are identical, and both displays have a 16x10 P3 wide color gamut with up to 500 nits of brightness, which is really nice for color correcting photos and color grading videos. With that said though, the extra 3 inches of screen real estate just makes everything feel a little bigger. Watching YouTube videos feels more immersive, and editing videos on Premiere Pro feels less cramped and more spacious. In general, the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite feels much more smoother and much more faster on the 16-inch MacBook Pro thanks to the more powerful CPU, thanks to the increase in memory capacity, and thanks to the inclusion of a dedicated graphics card. If you are interested in seeing specific performance tests and comparisons, please let me know down below in the comment section and I will definitely take that into consideration. In my opinion, the battery life on both the 13-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pro are excellent. In my use case, I can easily make it through a 13-hour day between school, work, studying, and watching media content with a solid 25% of battery remaining by the time I go to bed on either devices. The only caveat is that I do plug in my charger when video editing at my job since I have a desk and it wouldn't make any sense to not take advantage of this charging opportunity. Moving on to the trackpad, it's just huge. The trackpad on the 13 inch already felt massive, but the 16 inch's trackpad is borderline overwhelming. I've never accidentally ran my fingers off the trackpad on the 16 inch MacBook Pro and I love it. The response and gesture controls on both trackpads are fantastic and intuitive. With the speakers, the 16 inch MacBook Pros are wider, allowing for Apple to squeeze in two dual force canceling woofers. What this translates to is a slightly louder maximum volume and significantly improved audio quality. The audio sounds more full, deep, rich, and less tinny. There's definitely more bass than on the 13 inch. However, in my personal opinion and use case, the max volume on the 16 inch has typically been too loud for me, causing me to mostly use my speakers at around 80%. Unfortunately, the port options on both of these MacBook Pros are the same. Four Thunderbolt 3 ports and one headphone jack. Please note that my 13-inch MacBook Pro is the $1,800 version with four Thunderbolt 3 ports. The $1,300 and $1,500 versions only come with two Thunderbolt 3 ports. With that said, I would have loved to see six Thunderbolt 3 ports or even an SD card slot on the 16-inch, but a person can only dream. The touch bar on both the 13-inch and 16-inch are functionally the same. The 16-inch's touch bar features a dedicated escape key and a separated and matte finished Touch ID sensor. The change to the Touch ID sensor seems arbitrary to me. As for the digital escape key on the 13 inches touch bar, I personally have not had it freeze on me in the last year and three months or so of using it, but a physical escape key sure is welcome. Other than that, the main part of the touch bar is unchanged. I mostly use it for changing tabs, changing brightness, changing volume, and adding emojis on iMessage. Saving the most controversial for last is the new Magic Keyboard on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. One tiny change is that the inverted T setup is back for the arrow keys, which to me feels like yet another arbitrary decision by Apple as I do not have a preference for either setup. In general, I prefer the typing experience on the butterfly keyboard, but I would rather choose the Magic Keyboard any day of the week. The butterfly keyboard is louder, has larger keys, and has lower key travel. However, I have had numerous sticky key issues in the past that I feel will keep coming back up that may eventually lead to key failure. With that said, the new Magic Keyboard features a scissor switch mechanism. The keys are slightly smaller, are more quiet, and have more key travel, thus increasing reliability in the long run. If the butterfly keyboard were to just work properly and not have a million issues, I would choose it over the Magic Keyboard. But sadly, that's just not the case. Overall, both MacBook Pros are fantastic. Both of these devices run macOS Catalina the same, allowing you to use features such as sidecar, airdrop, handoff, and more just fine. Both allow you to unlock your computer with either a finger or with your Apple Watch. What really sells me on using a MacBook is the refined experience of macOS, the bright and color accurate retina display, and how it interacts so well with other devices in the Apple ecosystem. 
If you have to ask yourself if you need the extra performance and other benefits of the 16 inch MacBook Pro apart from the keyboard, I feel like the chances are that you don't need it. If you don't rely on your computer for intense programs regarding programming, content creation, photo editing, video editing, or more, then I probably wouldn't get the 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you're using it primarily for college, then the MacBook Air might even be a better option. And that's gonna be it for today's video. I didn't wanna to talk too much about exact specifications because there are a ton of other tech YouTubers who have done the exact same video, and also because you could do a quick five minute Google search side by side and compare the specs that way. But if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.